Okay. <clears throat> now, dear students, now we are today. I am going to uh, talk about morphology, and um, before that, I'd like to say that this is going to be the last lecture concerning. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, as far as this semester is concerned, because so far I have made uh, nine videos and this is going to be the 10th, it's going to be the last. In this video, I am going to talk about morphology, what is morphology, and it is not, I mean, it is, uh, now with morphology, I'm not going, to, uh, you also, not only me, but also you, you do not start from scratch and from nothing. No, you have an idea. The idea that you have it, either it is from last year, as you told me, that you, that Dr. Bahar gave you an idea about mor morphemes. And uh, uh, last time when I asked you about things related to morphology, you were able, you said, yes, yeah, this is, we call it this, we call it that. So you, this means that you have an idea. You have what we call a background about what? About morphology. Now, <clears throat> um, now uh, the way I'm going to start this lecture is that um, now in chapter five, uh, when we dealt with how languages increase their vocab, uh, their words, sorry. Now, we were dealing with words Okay, right. Now we said now how do these words are added? Sorry, to uh, to to a language, any language. I mean, either by 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 means of borrowing, by means of loan translation, by means of compounding, by means of clipping. Uh, sorry, uh, blending, etc., etc. The last the last what uh, word formation process, which we dealt with was derivation derivation and we said that in derivation in derivation we what we create words by adding these uh, what word like elements uh, uh, sorry yes word like elements bits word like elements they are not words, but they are word-like elements. They are like words, but they are not words by themselves. Yeah. Now, uh, now, uh, now these what these uh, elements or word-like elements are. Uh, uh, I mean, can be either uh, these bits. I mean, either can can either be. Uh, what, uh, for example, this, with this hyphen, this means that something comes after, or in the middle, here, in the middle of the word, here, in the middle, the beginning, and here at the end of the word, So for example, now re rewritten rewritten. I write it, I mean, as a one word re written. So now we have derived, we have derived what the word rewritten by adding what by means of this okay we have rewrite re then add write and then there is another bit of a bit, another bit or word like element this is here it is added in the at the end of the word and uh, re this is added to the beginning of the word the this is a word okay and this is which is added to the end of the word giving me written 
this is I call it a suffix this is I call it a prefix and there is here if there is something but for, of course there is nothing in inside here we call it infix now these three bits one two three can be grouped uh, can be grouped or put under a category this category is called what affixes so now um, <clears throat> Right. Now, suppose, for example, let me take another example. This is just, I mean, um, I'm trying to refresh your memory uh, concerning uh, what um, morphology. This is what we dealt with under what we call derivation last time, I mean. Take another example, the word beauty, for example. Beauty. Beauty. The word beauty. The beauty when it is added when we put followed by F U L that gives me beautiful. Now this is beauty plus F U L beautiful. Write, write, rewrite, rewrite. So this is here. Now what is the point here? The point is, now these we call them here, we call them these, we call them this and this also. These have bits or prefixes. These we call them derivational. Derivational morphemes. Derivational morphemes. Why are they called derivational? Because they have given me a new word. I mean, without beautiful, without F-U-L, <coughs> I cannot have the word beautiful. I have just a beauty. Without the existence, without having F-U-L, we cannot have what? Beautiful. Also, without, re, without R-E, we cannot have what? Rewrite. Right. Now, later on, I'm going to say something concerning derivational and what do we call this? Is this, is this also a derivational morpheme or a, de a derivational word-like element, for example, as in the book, as he, uh, uh, Murphy uses this, um, this term, word-like elements. They are not, uh, they are not, in fact, they are not uh, words, but they are word-like. They are like words, right? Why are they? <coughs> why are they called word-like elements? See, as I think, they are phonemes are not called. See, this is a very important point. Phonemes are not called word-like elements, but morphemes are called word-like elements. The reason is because 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 now word-like elements or what we call morpheme they have either they are like words because they have a meaning they have a meaning and if not a meaning then it is they have what we what we call a grammatical function so this is i think why why he calls them word-like elements so there is there is a point of similarity. There is an aspect of similarity. There is a similarity between what? Between words and morphemes. What is the point? What is the common point? The common point between words and morphemes, I mean, or word-like elements. Let me use this for the time being, word-like element. So the point of similarity between words and word-like element is that word-like elements, they are like more words because words, they, they have a meaning, and so are morphemes, they have a meaning. And if not, if they don't have a meaning, lexical meaning, I mean, within mean, dictionary, huh, they have a grammatical form. So in all cases, they, 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 they what? They, uh, they, um, they have something. They have something. 
either a grammatical, uh, they are characterized by something. What is that? They are either uh, lexical, or they have um, meaning, like words, lexical words, like adjective, like nouns, like what? Verbs. Hmm? They have a meaning. Or uh, they have a grammatical function. So in all cases, it is useful. It gives something. It represents something. In isolation, it has it has either a grammatical function or a lexical meaning. Uh, right. Now, but if we uh, now this is not found within uh, a phoneme. A phoneme doesn't have this characteristic. Okay. Right. Now, with this introduction to morphemes. Now. Uh, let us uh, take an example. What is, uh, oh, sorry, oh, yeah, let's take an example. What is this example? You remember uh, <clears throat> when we talked about back formation? Yeah, back formation. And when we talked about the word, um, you know, we, the word donation, for example, donation, donation, and we said um, donator, donate, sorry, not donator, donor, donate, donate, D O N, donate. We said that donation donation is existed or came into existence before the word donate. So here we have the uh, the process is uh, is the opposite. Opposite. What is opposite? Opposite is instead of deriving donation from donate, we are deriving donate from donation. Okay, so I'm not after this because we have already talked about this. We said, uh, we gave examples. But my, my why I um, uh, selected the word donation or chose the word donation to talk about, uh, I mean, as a starting point, as an introduction to what I am going to talk about, is that the, uh, the word donation um, we think that we know what is donation. I mean, as, as uh, by, put, by the way, put you in your mind that here we are talking about the structure of the word, the structure of the word. Now here, when I say donation is a word, we think that this is not the basic element or the basic thing in the word donation. I mean, uh, I think that donation is basic, basic in the sense that it cannot be analyzed any further. No, it is not like this. Now, when we uh, when a donation when I uh, when I divide the word donation when I analyze the word donation when I segment the word donation into like for example donate plus uh, a t o n or t i o n okay. Donate, D -O, uh, donate on T I O N, T I O N, T I O N. This, then, uh, then this word, then this word, is further can be further analyzed. So this is not basic. And why, why, why is it not basic? It is not basic because I can further, I can analyze it into the word donate, and it has a meaning, and T I O N also it has a meaning. So now this is going to be the basic thing here. This is not the basic. I mean, I mean, basic by, by basic, I mean, it, is, it cannot be analyzed further. So uh, donate, I cannot break it up any further. But whereas donation, I can break it up. I can break it up into, into donate and donate has a meaning. It's a verb. It means to, uh, you give money, helping people by giving them money. And T-I-O-N, which is has a meaning and because it gives you what um, I mean it changes the verb into a noun. 
okay like this so now uh, this is the this is the uh, this is the center or this is the core of what I am going to talk about in this lecture so now the point uh, this we think that this is yes it is a word huh? We, because last time we said that we dealt with words. Now these words, these words, which we think that they are, uh, they cannot, they are basic. They cannot be analyzed uh, any further. Uh, yeah, we we uh, we discover that, in fact, or really, no, we can uh, what uh, divide it into, uh, I mean, yeah, divide it. Like, for example, the word donate, we can't divide it into donate. And this gives me what a meaning. This also gives me a meaning. Right. <clears throat> now, um, take, for example, أعطيتو أعطيتو الكتابة إلى علي. Now, um, uh, if we look at this sentence, أعطيت الكتابة إلى علي. We think yes, أعطيت هذه one word. Okay. This is another word. This is a third word. This is a fourth. So this word, uh, this sentence has fourth words, uh, four words. Sorry, and. Now, each word, we think that this is أعطيتو الكتابة إلى علي. Now, we think that of أعطيتو, it is a word, and this word cannot be analyzed anymore. Okay? But in, in point of fact, or as a matter of fact, this is أعطيتو can be analyzed into أعطى وتا Okay, this is and if Maksura when we add to it it changes into ya. So now Aqaitu can be analyzed into Aqa Zaidanta. This is for the doer of the action. Doer. And so now uh, here this word has two morphemes, Aqa Aqa and Ta. Right. Now الكتابة can be uh, analyzed into ألف لام ألف لام plus كتاب so ألف لام has a meaning what is the what is it um, grammatical function it has a grammatical function it tells me that this is definite huh? determined definite determined definite كتاب we know it has a lexical meaning إلى and علي they cannot be uh, uh, what uh, divided any further, right? So now we are going to deal with these things. I'm not going to deal with. Uh, okay, I am going to deal with words. Definitely, I'm, I'm going to deal with words. But I'm, uh, in addition to words, my the basic or the the focus is going to be the, on these things. This like just like ta, like alif. Like uh, A T I O N <clears throat> plus I A L, these things, word like elements. This is word like element, it indicates the, uh, the door of the action. It has what? Uh, person, first person, the first person. Comes to first person, not the doer. Yeah, first person, speaker, first person. First person. This is what for uh, something is definite. So this is the similarity now between uh, a morpheme and a word. What is the, what it, but there's no relationship between the word and uh, phoneme. I mean, as far as these two things, what are they? No, the morpheme has a lexical meaning or it has a grammatical function, whereas the phoneme, the sound, this for example, it has no meaning by itself. 
unless it is in combination. You see, uh, <clears throat> now these uh, word-like elements uh, which I have already talked about, um, they are, uh, uh, I mean, we can classify them, we can classify them according to certain criteria into groups, into groups or categories. Okay, now what does that mean? Let's take an example from the book. Take, for example, this. Hmm. <clears throat> this is number one. And, uh, okay. Now, see here. Here, this, this is the basic element, this is the word, this is the word to which we add what morphemes, this is and this. So now the word and the rest, this is one word, but this word can be analyzed into what? Into an, you see, this is a very important point. Now, how do I know that this word has three morphemes or, or, or more, for, uh, more or less? Now, it depends on this point. Put this point in your mind that the morpheme, it is either with a lexical meaning or having a lexical meaning or it has a grammatical function. So now, dress, dress is we, this, to which we add, I mean, this is, how do we call it, stem, stem, it is a word, okay, now what about this, so now dress can be uh, analyzed into dress, which is we call stem, right? because this is, I mean, the, is a content word, Hadi, Hadi, content word, content word, yani the meaning of the sentence is taken from dress. Now, this is also, we can also analyze the, this word into uh, having you and an. This, all, this, is also, this also has a meaning here, a meaning. What is it? Opposite. Dress and dress. Take off. And then we have this, ED, this is to, uh, to, uh, to just to mark the post. So now dress, dress is a noun, uh, sorry, verb, rather verb here. To it we add an, and then we add what? ED to it. Right. Now, uh, can I delete uh, ED, yes, of course, can delete it. Can I delete you and, and then I get dressed? Or can I delete both this and this? Yes, I can. And what I am left with is dress, put it as a beating. So now, this, we think this word cannot what we think. The point is, and Al-An has said, the, uh, what we think that, that this is, word which cannot be analyzed or cannot be uh, break up any further, in fact, it, uh, it can be. Right. So uh, now, uh, according to the book, this is, I call it prefix. This is, I call it what? Suffix. Now what is, what is, what, what about this? Now here, now this and this, they cannot stand on their own. I mean, when you go to the dictionary, when you go to the dictionary, you do not find um, an entry to the, to an, 
and an entry to ED, like you find uh, an entry, uh, but you find an entry to what? To dress. Right. So now, because now these which cannot stand on their own and they do not have a separate entry in the dictionary, they are called bound morphemes. They are called what? Bound morphemes. So now morphemes, when they are prefixes in the form of a prefix or in the form of a suffix or in the form of infix, they are all called bound Bound morphine. Bound morphine. What does it mean by bound morphine? It means they cannot stand on their own. They have to be attached to fuck, like this. Now, an is attached to dress. Ed is attached to what? This. Now, can we have this un ed like this? I mean, prefix plus ed. No. Because now these are attached to what a stem or what we call a word. Now in morphology, the stem is called what free morpheme. Okay, free morpheme. Free morpheme. So now. Morphemes, morphemes, can either be free or they cannot be bound, or they can be bound. Now, what is the point here? Here there is a very interesting point. What is the point? The point is, now free morpheme, they are free morpheme, they are more, they are words by the, they, they can be words, they can, they are, they are also called words, they can be words, but in the area of morphology, we call it free morphine. The Hassan free morphine, in Arabic, we call it morphine. Okay? يعني شنو وحدة صرفية يعني بعد هسه هذه الوحدة الصرفية with the يعني it has it has a meaning لأن أخذ in order to distinguish it أنا مود أفرقها من الوحدة الصوتية طيب شنو الآن واحد الفرق بين الوحدة الصرفية والوحدة الصوتية this is a very good question and you have to know the distinction between الوحدة الصرفية والوحدة الصوتية الوحدة الصرفية معناتها it has a meaning if not a meaning الوحدة الصرفية it has a meaning if not a meaning then it has a grammatical function بينما ويراز الوحدة الصوتية اللي هي نخبر عنها بالمور... بالفونيم هاي الوحدة الفونيم الفونيم ها هاي تسمى الوحدة الصوتية الفونيم ما doesn't have what uh, a meaning doesn't have a meaning by itself. The realization of the of the phoneme is what? Is the sound or the phone? As I said last time. Okay? You know, the phoneme was something abstract in the mind. You cannot see it. It is something abstract. But the realization, how do we realize it? We realize it uh, as a sound as a sound. When we move our lips, we move our tongue, we move, uh, yeah, the lips, the jaw, okay, um, we can realize it through um, movement of the lips, movement of the tongue, movement of the, uh, uh, movement of the uh, vocal cords, movement of the uh, the velin, the soft palate, like this. So now, um, morphemes,
when they are like words, يعني like word, what do I mean by like word? Like word, they, in addition to having a lexical meaning, uh, they can stand on their own. They stand on their own. It means like word. Any word, any word, is can stand on its own. Any word. But not each morpheme can stand on its own. This is a very important point. Any word can stand its own. Take, for example, this word, A, had an indefinite article. Had a word can stand alone on its own. The pronoun I, <coughs> also a word, because it can stand alone. So now, morpheme, three morphemes, three morphemes, three morphemes are like words because they can stand on their own. They can stand separately. They are not attached. They are not attached. And I told you last time in the lecture of last week that if you want to understand the idea of a free morpheme and bound morpheme, put in your mind the distinction of what? Uh, the classification of uh, of pronouns in Arabic uh, in terms of whether they are attached or not, in, in terms of whether they can stand on their own or not. Take for example, Anna, Nahnu, Hum, okay, Haula. These are free morphemes. Why are they free morphemes? Because they are like the word address, they can stand on their own. Okay? So now, um, the first thing that you should know about morphemes is that uh, morphemes, or what we call word-like elements, they are like words, like words. Why are they like words? They are like words because they have a meaning. Hmm? They have a meaning, lexical meaning. For example, what dress or undress? Undress is the opposite. It has a lexical meaning, but this doesn't have a lexical meaning. This has a grammatical function. As I will talk about this. Had one thing. They are. Uh, in what way they are similar to words? In what in what sense they resemble words? They resemble word because they have a meaning, or they have a grammatical function. يعني هسا الآن هذا ال a definite article هذا هي it has a grammatical function بهم what is it يعني it indicate it marks what singularity right now if a word or if a morpheme can be further like a word can be further like a word, I'm going to word like element, in the sense of uh, lexical meaning, in the sense of a grammatical function, it, uh, it as well can be like words, it is further like words, يعني it is approaching to be called a word, not to be called a word, but it is, I mean, it, it becomes nearer or more similar to words when in what in, in what sense in the sense of it can stand alone because all words can stand alone but not all morphemes can stand alone so this is a very th a very important so when a, a for me a morpheme can stand alone like words we call it free morpheme حرة طليقة not attached to another to other what to words they can stand alone right 
Now, what about opposite over free? Whole opposite over free is the word bound. What does it mean bound? Bound, muqayyid. It cannot stand alone. So now in this word, undressed, we have this is bound, and this is also bound morphine. Then where is the, uh, the free morphine here? See here I'm talking about morphology. This is free morphine. Right. I don't, um, right. So this is one thing. So now, I can do this. Morphemes. Whether they can stand on their own or they cannot, I can classify them as what? Free and what? Bound. <coughs> this is the first thing. Now, free morphemes, they are like words. Bound morphemes, they are like words in terms of what? In terms of meaning, lexical meaning, or in terms of grammatical function. But the free morphemes, they are like words in terms of their lexical meaning or grammatical function. In addition to this, they're in terms of their uh, uh, capacity, their ability to what to stand uh, on their own individually like words. So these are more like words. Morphemes, free morphemes are more like words than bound morphemes. Why? <clears throat> because this is in addition to its lexical meaning or a grammatical function, they can stand alone. Right. <clears throat> so this is the first thing. The other thing is that we come to this free morpheme. This is free morpheme. See now, I start from morphemes. Free morpheme. This is the, the first classification, the first division. Then I take what? Free morphemes. Free morphemes, but say they, they stand on their own. They can either be lexical morpheme or functional morpheme. Functional morphemes. Okay? So <clears throat> free morphemes can be either lexical morphemes, lexical morphemes, sorry, uh, or functional morphemes. Now what do it mean? What do we mean by lexical morpheme? Lexical, it means they have content word, uh, content. I mean, uh, they have meaning. The meaning of a sentence is taken from the content words or, or, or we can say from lexical morphemes. It is not taken from the functional morphemes. So now we call it lexical morpheme because it has a lexical meaning like, like a word. These are, <coughs> uh, these are represented or these are uh, usually found as uh, like what? Lexical uh, morphemes, they are like verbs, adjectives, nouns. Now when you when you take a sentence and you want to um, you want to translate this sentence or you want to understand this sentence, you want to know the meaning of this sentence, when you want to know the meaning of this sentence, now you take the meaning hmm, from the lexical what lexical what uh, morphemes found what in the word uh, in the sentence, right? Now, <clears throat> so now uh, um, morphemes. Repeating myself. First of all, they are free or bound. I mean, whether they can stand on their own or not, they can be free or bound. Now, those who are free, those who are free morphemes, they can be either lexical morphemes, 
functional morphine. So a lexical morphine it can stand on its own, and the functional morphine can stand on its own. Now, functional morphemes like what? Like, uh, for example, the a prepositions, definite when definite article, prepositions, conjunctions, yeah, and for example, to, into, um, you know, to, into, of, um, yeah, to, into, of, out, in, etc., etc. Are the preposition conjunctions like, for example, and, like, um, what, uh, and, like, uh, what, uh, uh, yeah, and, uh, neither or um, right are what conjunctions conjunctions and neither nor or either or These are three morphemes, two and two of the prepositions, the and a preposition uh, so, or definite article. These either conjunctions. Here I'd like to say something that definite article or indefinite article in Arabic they are attached, but in English no, they are separate. Well, that's why. You see, functional free morphemes, free, um, yeah, free morphemes, see, free morphemes, lexical and what? Functional. So the, uh, the functional morpheme in, uh, in Arabic, in, in English, they are <clears throat> like prepositions. Some of them are like Arabic, but some of them are not. And take, for example, the or a. They are attached, they are um, what we call bound. So they and a, in English they are free, functional, free. So, and free morphemes, they are functional. Yeah, these are functional. But in Arabic, they are, no, they are uh, bound, they are attached. Right. What else? What else? Um, now, uh, bound morphemes, then we finish from the uh, free morphemes. We move to now to bound morphemes. Daniel Ann has said, um, let me repeat, uh, morphemes can be free, can be bound. Yani free, they are like words. Like words. Like words because they can't stand alone. Okay. Or they cannot be like words. Yani they cannot stand alone. Bound. Right. Then the free morphemes are classified, are grouped into, uh, can be divided into, into lexical morpheme and or and functional morpheme. Lexical morphemes, it means like adjectives, like nouns, like verbs. Functional morphemes, like prepositions, like uh, definite and definite article, like uh, conjunctions. Right. So now, this is the first, second. Now, uh, we have finished now with lexical morphemes. We move now to bound morphemes. Now, what about morphemes? Because we have the class. So, free morphemes can be classified into lexical, mor uh, lexical morphemes and functional morphemes. Now, bound morphemes are also, are also what uh, divided into what? Uh, into two. Have two divisions, bound morphemes. They can be either derivational, derivational, or uh, what or inflection. Mm. 
inflection. Derivational, we know, we took it. And derivation in al bits hadi that we added to words, whether we add them to the beginning or to the end. Like, for example, uh, for example, uh, <clears throat> I call uh, honest, dishonest, other derivational. Dishonestly had also derivational. Okay. So now see this uh, honest. I derive this uh, dishonest from uh, honest by adding dis, and then I derive dishonest dishonestly from dishonest by adding what ly. He behaved dishonestly. He is dishonest. He is honest. Honestly speaking. See? Okay? Right. Now, uh, now uh, derivational and uh, what about inflection? Inflectional Arabi. They are uh, Arabi uh, means they deal with the final form of the word. شو نحن عندنا الحركات هذه العربية يعني مثلا مثلا كتاب 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 هكذا عربي يعني we change in the final form of the word هذا معنات inflectional عربي يعني deals with the final form they change the final form of the word when they change the final form of the word they do not change the word class no the word class is kept يعني إذا هو اسم يبقى اسم if it is a noun yeah the I mean the 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 category of the word class is not changed the category of that word is not changed what is changed is just the final form يعني شلون مثلا for example if I take مثلا for example boy هذي boy when I boy is a noun when I add s خلاص boy is boy it's a noun but I change the final form Okay, I change the final form. يعني مثلا معلم بالعربي معلمون معلم هو مفرد اسم مفرد هذا معلمون هم هنا اسم. It's also a noun. We did it. What we did here. شوف إن العلامة يعني شكل شكل كلمة معلمون the final form شكلها is different from معلم. Well, now this is a noun, this is also a noun. But the difference is that in, you know, we have one noun on the end of the word. Okay? Uh, this is the plural form. But, okay, so we change the, the, the form. Just we change in the form. Are the singular, this is a plural. But do we change the word class? No, we do not change it. And I get it, uh, we do not change. Here also, boy. If a boy is a, as an as a what is a singular. When I add s, boys is a singular and it is a noun. Or boys is also a noun, but it is what plural. Now, what is the point which I said at the beginning of the lecture that I, I should tell you about? The, uh, should have a difference between derivational and inflectional. Derivational uh, morphemes include. For example, uh, when you change the word uh, from um, eight, eight, eight inflectional uh, morphemes in English. What are they? First of all, third person singular. Third person singular. As I'll show it to you. Possessive. Okay. We have, uh, we have, uh, with the verb. Ed, uh, ed past, or ed past participle, or en also. Okay. Um, uh, with, uh, also we have um, with adjectives we use er, est. They are all these are inflectional because put in your mind behind the inflectional who are 
Arabi, and Shun Arabi in who they change the final of the form, the, the word, the final of the word, the final form of the word. They do not, uh, 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 they do not change, they do not touch, they do not uh, do anything to the word class. No, the word class is kept as it is. It is. <clears throat> it is at, uh, it remains. And if adjective, adjective, noun, noun, verb, verb. Okay? So what is changed? Just the final form. Right. So now, uh, my point, which I'd like you to uh, pay attention to, and which you have to keep in mind, is that derivational, when, they, when we derive uh, derivational morphemes, when we uh, derive a new word from uh, what? Uh, uh, a new word by adding a derivational morpheme, uh, like for example, uh, honest, I derive dishonest by adding DIS. Now, this is when you go to the dictionary, you have created a new word, a new word that has an, ent an entry, also dishonestly. When you go to the dictionary, you find it. You got, it has an entrant, an entry. Whereas in inflectional morphemes, no. In, in, uh, in inflectional morphemes, their function is can, uh, is only it, it just deals with the inside the sentence. Yeah, it, it it works only inside the sentence. That is it. But are they uh, given a separate en entry like derivational morphemes? No. Derivational morphemes, who are more, uh, also derivational morphemes, are not given uh, what uh, a separate entry. But my point is that derivational morphemes, when we add them, uh, it is uh, it's finished. خلاص يعني they have given us, they give us what a new word. That word, when you go to the dictionary, you will find it. يعني how? And مثلاً for example, كلمة uh, honest. I'll be honest. Honest. We find it in the dictionary. Now, if you go to the dictionary, when we add this to the honest, خلاص I derived to create a new word. What word is going to have a separate identity? It will have we, خلاص صباح. Okay. Now, when I add ly, خلاص هذه dishonestly and man, كذلك it has uh, what an entry. Who, by the way, يعني most of the times have the adverb. They 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 give it at the end. يعني they do not give it. Uh, um, an, entry, an entry, but uh, more, uh, only adjectives, nouns, and verbs they are given. Uh, but sometimes, uh, sometimes uh, adverbs, sometimes yes, they are given an entry, a separate entry. Hmm. So now, uh, my point is that now when uh, uh, derivational morphemes, when they give us a new word, now the new word. Uh, which is created, which is added by adding a derivation of morphine, uh, it, is, it is going to have a, 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 what, an entry. It has it, it, uh, because it is going to create a new word. And that new word is, is uh, given what, um, an, a separate entry in the, in the dictionary. Now, uh, let us give, uh, take an example in which, and this example is going to summarize the, 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 the groups or the types of what morphemes which I have already already what talked about. Before that, let me
So how the, uh, here, so how the, the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, we have eight inflectional morphemes in English. Eight inflectional morphemes. What are they? Those which are added to nouns and include possessive s. I think I'm going to add Ali, uh, Ali Stamello, possessive, possession. Or how do what? How the plural, the morpheme plural. The morpheme plural, yeah, the boy boys, my friend. Z. Okay. طبعا إذا كانت إذا هي جمع بوزي مثلا عندي boys هذه بعد ال S ال boys هذه هنا ال هذه مو I added here لا I added after this. Hey. When it is singular, it is it comes uh, the apostrophe comes before the s, but uh, and when it is a plural, it comes after the apostrophe. Then, <coughs> then two inflectional morphemes, <coughs> one indicates or marks uh, possession, yani possessive, this one uh, this is uh, possessive, this is plural. Now, what about verbs? Verbs have a third person singular, third person singular, method, teach, teaches, uh, clean, cleans. ING, for example, teach, teaching, clean, cleaning. ED, cleaned, and the other past. Well, this is what about this E and other past participle? Other what? Past participle. Method written. Then other written, active right plus EM. The Kalimat written has two morphemes. What are they? Had the right, <coughs> which is called the stem, the free morpheme, and the past participle. Then adjective. Adjective here we have these two inflectional morphemes. Method on the method um, on the um, uh, happy. How about tall, tall, taller. Two, tall, taller, tallest. How do you, the er, the est, the en, the gd, the ing, the s, the s, the s? These are five, eight. They only change the final form. يعني هسا مثلا عندي بالكلمة tall هي adjective. و taller is also adjective. و tallest is also adjective. But there is a, there is a difference between tallest to taller. أولا the form the final form is different شكلها يختلف هذا شكل العرابي يعني شكل الأخير final يعني شو إحنا غيرنا مثلا معلم المعلمون غيرنا مثلا شكله معلم يختلف عن معلم it is different بال بالformal كذلك tall tall is different هذا er هذا est هذا one thing the other thing is إنه إنه هو هذا tall as an, as an adjective, or taller is also an adjective, or tallest is also an adjective. But the difference is that taller, for example, we use it in comparison when we compare between two. But tallest, when we have three and more, we go tallest. يعني مثلا, he is the tallest student in the classroom. Manata, there is more than three, three and more students in the, in the classroom, and he is the tallest. يعني no one is taller than him. Subla. هذه الانفلكشنال مورفيمز الديريفيشنال مورفيمز لا الديريفيشنال مورفيمز كان ايذر بي بريفيكسز او ذي كان بي وات سفيكسز طبعا باي ذا واي على فكره الانفلكشنال مورفيمز ار اولويز 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 اي سي انفيسايزينغ ذا وورد ذا وورد اولويز ذي ار ادد تو ذا اند اوف ذا وورد to the end of the word, whereas derivational morphemes, they can be added to the beginning of the word, beginning, bidaitically, مثل عندي honest, dishonest, عندي مثلا, for example, <coughs> happy, unhappy, correct, incorrect, right, rewrite, how the derivational morphemes, or it can be to the end of the word, مثل عندي كلمة beauty, beautiful, عندي uh, مثلا, uh, for example, uh, wonder, wonderful, uh, and the method and govern government, 
and if, for example, uh, uh, derived derivation like this. Now, here I'd like to say something concerning derivational morphemes. Now, there is a difference here concerning what prefixes and suffixes, as far as uh, the notion of derivation. When, what is the the, uh, uh, the the difference? Now, the difference between the prefixes and suffixes, as far as the idea of what derivation, put this in your mind, because earlier we talked about derivation you know, derivation uh, as a way for information process is that uh, prefixes most of the time, yeah, and almost always, they change the meaning. They are concerned with meaning of prefixes. Derivational morphemes, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, derivational suffixes, suffixes, uh, the, uh, derivational uh, prefixes, uh, or derivation morphemes can be either prefixes or suffixes. Uh, derivation morph morphemes as being prefixes, they are they are concerned with meaning. And for example, honest, dishonest, full, unfull, uh, correct, incorrect. Here, the, we change uh, the meaning. The meaning. Some. Uh, I mean. Um, it depends on the meaning. By the way, the prefix has a meaning because we said that the way uh, I mean uh, a morpheme is like a word. It is. Uh, it has a meaning, either a meaning or a grammatical function, and it is further like a word. Don't forget this: that it can stand alone. What is one when it is a free morpheme? So now prefixes they deal with meaning, and they change the meaning. They do not change the word class. I mean, I call it honest to dishonest. It is adjective. But for example, with uh, suffixes, derivational suffixes, now we change the word class. We change the word class. And we, uh, the meaning is also changed. The meaning is also so changed. But most importantly, the most important thing is that I and uh, sorry uh, that we change the word class here, and we are going to derive a new word. For example, the word uh, govern, how they govern, govern, you dear, and the word government. Uh, sorry, from verb into noun. What that means, derive the new word. Here I change the word class, verb into noun. But when I say uh, honest, dishonest, honest, I am calling dishonest. So honest is an adjective, but dishonest is also what? This is here, the focus is uh, the meaning uh, is changed. Here, the, the word class is changed as well as the meaning. The meaning, you see here uh, in uh, government, it doesn't mean that it is going to be totally different. Um, it is uh, related in a way or another, but in the case of what? In the case of dishonest, that the meaning is changed. Dishonest, muaddab, or this, uh, uh, muaddab, bainama, uh, honest, muaddab, so there is a big difference here gives you the opposite. Depending on the meaning of what? Of the prefix. So prefixes, the revision prefixes, they have a meaning, like word. Yes. These, they also have a meaning. And other might gives you a noun. Yani it has a meaning. There is a book called Morphology by Dr. Takur. It gives you the meaning of what of uh, derivational uh, morphemes, whether they are uh, prefixes or suffixes. There, I think I have the book with me. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Now let's have an example that uh, gives you um, an idea about what, about the classification of what morphemes that we have done so far. The uh, Take other, for example, 
the teacher apostrophe because it is here my not had a singular as no if this is here this is plural but it is singular here so yeah right the teachers while shocked to the girls Parents. Hadi cümle. This is the same thing. Lan hasa hadi. These uh, hadi words. How many words? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven words. Seven words. Hadi sentence has seven words. Now, are these words, can these words be divided? Yani, has had a teacher here, yani, basic, yani, basic it means I cannot divide it any further. This is the point. Okay, now we have seven words. Shuf laham, one, two. Now, how do I recognize a word? Yani, and if I know how the word, oh, then for example, it, it is written, who are uh, written separately, but then there is a space between Hadako space and Naya. Because there is a space between this and this, Manat, this is a word. Because there is a space between wildness and teacher, Manat, a word, this is a word. Because there is a space between shocked and wildness, Manat, a shocked is a word. Whoa, whoa, so on. Now let's come. Now when we divide a word, into its ingredient, uh, uh, constituent morphemes, yani, which constitute the word. Put in your mind that when you divide a word into its constituent morphemes, now each constituent morpheme should have a, a, either a lexical meaning or a grammatical function. First of all, because it can stand alone, three. What is the function? What is the function? It can be lexical meaning, it will be grammatical function. No, grammatical. I call it free. What is the function? What is the function? We have to say that the free morphemes are lexical or functional. Then, did you know teacher? Teacher can be divided into teach. Another one. واحد بلس اي ار زين هسه هذا الاي ار انا شو نعتبره؟ يعني تولد يو انه هذا سفكس سفكس وهذا السفكس از قلنا اي سيد ذا سفكس از ذي تشين ذا ويرد كلاس هذا تيتش ورد ذا وين اي اد اي ار تو بيكم ذا نام زين وهذا وات اباوت ذيس اذا هسه هذا صار تيتش تيتش لكسيكال Free lexical morphine. Then will ER and ER free and sorry bound bound to derivational other or bound derivational and I'm not bound them derivational or my inflection the other derivational. Yes, because it changes the word class. Hold on, let me teach you a teacher. Bound derivational. Then what about had an S, had the positive S, but the Hamina, what? Method had the function would be. Function. Gunna and the one, sorry, an inflectional. Inflectional. One gunna, the bound morphine, they can either be derivational or they can be inflectional. For had a bound morphine, had a bound. Okay, at the bound, you know, attached, like ER, and then attached. But what is the difference between ER, we had a derivation, but had a one, had the inflection. Then, 
زين وايلدنس اجي وايلدنس كان بي وايلد هذا واحد هذا شنو فري اول مره فري وبعدين شنو لكسيكو لانه هو ادجكتيف والان اي دبل اس لا هذا اول باوند وبعدين شنو ديريفيشن زين شوبت هذا همينا اول مره فري ولكسيكو وهذا وات اباوت ذس لا هذا باوند وبعد شنو باوند هذا انفليكشن زين الذات خلاص هذا فري بس وات سورت اوف فري فري هذا فانكشنال وظيفي زين Let's come to girls. So in the girl, girl had a one had a free, free, Mexico. Then we'll add the S had a possessive. Had the first one bound, a possessive. Had the girl it it is added had the possessive it's added to the noun to noun. So parents of the parents free or not a parent free, free. بعدين شو تيلز فري لكسيكو زين والاس هير اس هذه مثل جست لايك تيتشرز هذه انفليكشنال باوند انفليكشنال هنايا ذيس اس انديكيت بلوراليتي باوند بلورا هنايا لا بوزيتيف اذا هسه الان هاو ماني مور فيمز دو وي هاف هير احنا قلنا وي هاف سيف ووردز هاو ماني مور فيمز هذا وان This is two. This is a three. This is four. This is five. This is six. This is seven. This is eight. This is nine. This is ten. This is eleven. This is a twelve. This is thirteen. And then how the seven words? Look at this sentence has seven words. Thirteen more forms. Thirteen what? Morphemes. Okay. You see, this is in the book, of course. You can see it. I mean, if you think it's not clear, I mean, the way I have expressed it might not be clear to you. And maybe my explanation is not clear, so you can go to the book to for further clarification. If you feel that this is not convincing to you, so you can go to the book. Um, what else is left? You see, uh, but there is something. What is it? It will morpheme or morph. مورفين ومورف زين وفونين وفون فون فون I I told you last time that المورفونين هو abstract يعني we cannot see the the phoneme the phoneme is in our in our mind the system here that we have it in our mind Then how do we know? يعني what is the real realization? إدراك شون أدرك أنا هذا المورفين. I realize it أدرك as a sound or as a phone. Okay. يعني مثلاً ال p as a morph as a phoneme. Okay. How do I know this is a phoneme? It is by by pronunciation. يعني being a sound. Now similarly, method just like this هو by analogy. Is we have morphine or morph. Now the morph, the morph, who are like phone. يعني شو المورف؟ المورف هو like phone. What is the resemblance? The resemblance is now هذا هو the concrete picture, the صورة ال um the صورة الحقيقية, the صورة الحقيقية. مثل ما هنا الصورة الحقيقية the real picture, the realization, the drug. يعني هسا إذا المورفين هو abstract. 
والفونيم از ان ابستراكت لكن المورف از ذا ريل ريلايزيشن الادراك مال المورفين از ثرو ذا مورف يعني وات وي برونونس هو المورف مثل ما هنايا وات وي برونونس از ذا فون اوكي اذا المورفين هي ابستراكت صوره in the mind but when we deal with it يعني in speech and when we come to analyze لا we 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 we, um, we analyze in terms of what morph فاذا هو in order to be more uh, accurate تكون دقيق اكثر تقول هذه uh, مثلا teachers it has a three morphs more three morphine لانه morphine is something abstract لكن المورفوه is um, is the what is the realization we realize it we, we deal with it زين هذا نمبر 1 بعد اكو sometimes بعض الاحيان you see um, um, انه هذا الانفلكشنال مورفين او الانفلكشن المورفين يعني مثلا فور اكزامبل هسه انا قلت مثلا ديسايد اقول ديسايدد زين ديسايد اقول هذا ديسايدد اقول بها تو مورفينز هذا الستم وهذا الاي دي اللي هو انفلكشن المورفين sometimes the picture is not like this بعض الاحيان ما عندي انا هكذا Similarly in pluralization. Sure. يعني مثلا إذا قلنا كلمة مثلا كلمة write wrote. لأن هسا أقول لك wrote تجي تحللها. How many morphemes does it have? واحد؟ لا. We have two. We have write هذا زائد past. زين where is past هنا؟ هنا past is realized as ed. طيب where is the past here? You will pass here. I realize it as a change in vowel. تغيير بال بال بالصوت هذا change in vowel. هذا change in vowel يعتبره هو marks the pass. Similarly, مثل هذا مثل كلمة مثل عندي كلمة boy. ها مثل عندي كلمة man. Woman. Then man. How many more themes does it have? It has two morphemes. أولا, we have man, lexical morpheme, free lexical morpheme. وبعد what else? The plural, plural. Then we have plural. هنا ما كو s here. There is no. أكو عندي شنو? We have vowel change. مثل ما هنا I have vowel change. Now I have also what vowel change. Sometimes there is not even vowel change. ما كو vowel change. There is. The word as it is. مثلا here مثلا أقول كلمة sheep و sheep يعني مثلا مثلا هي بوت three sheep زين هنا sheep هاي اعتبرها شنو؟ plural then where is where is the plural sheep plural morpheme؟ أقول هنايا the plural morpheme zero morpheme plus zero morpheme يعني ال يعني واحدة صار فيها الخاصة which is related to uh, plurality plurality sorry zero realization مالتها zero ما كفت شيء مو مثل هنا هسه هنا there is a vowel change هنا اكو vowel change هنا zero كلمة كذلك كلمة dear هنا عمينا dear فأقول مثلا dear when it is a sentence of course انه هنا هسه I don't know whether يعني whether it is singular or plural I don't know it depends on the context يعني you put it in a sentence and the sentence you can see it through it you can realize as it whether it is singular or plural. So what do I call here? It's a me zero morphine. This is uh, the last point with which I stop and um, I'll send you, uh, I'll make a quiz. The quiz is going to revolve around the, this lecture. Already we have an quiz. Uh, we had an, uh, a quiz, sorry, and there's going to be uh, another quiz which is about this. So I advise, advise to you, I'm going to tell you tomorrow, the representative, I'm going to tell them that they have made a new video which deals with chapter six. And I'm going to make a quiz on chapter six, 
concerning with this, these things. So uh, I'll, I'll inform, I'll tell the representative tomorrow um, so that you will see the video or you read chapter 6 instead because I am going to make a quiz. The quiz is not going to be a difficult one. It, it, is, it revolves about these things. So, and after the quiz, we can I can collect the mark of the first quiz and the second quiz. Then, uh, in addition to the mark, you obtain it, you get it uh, due to your to your attendance. We are you are going to have your average out of forty. So, thank you very much, and I hope I have been clear. Thank you very much. Okay.